Hi there, it's Dr. Bowers, and in this video I will be discussing how I treat counterstrain points with neuroocular release. This approach greatly reduces the amount of time needed to treat to only a few seconds, and it allows for the patient to actively return to neutral instead of the person treating having to passively return them to neutral. If you are unfamiliar with counterstrain points or the way they are classically treated, you may want to first go watch two of my other videos, What's the Point and Strain Counterstrain More Than a Point. Ocular release was described by Dr. Richard Feely at the AAO Convocation in 2018 and in an article published in the June 2020 AAO Journal. Feely states that neuroocular release can be used in conjunction with any indirect osteopathic technique and allows for a more efficient and effective treatment by recruiting the visual system to better affect the central nervous system's entrainment of somatic dysfunction. What that means for strain counterstrain dysfunction is the time needed to treat is greatly reduced from the classical 90 seconds to just a few seconds. So a little history before we move on with the rest. I did not attend Convo 2018, but I was told by someone who did that Dr. Feely mentioned this new way that he approaches treatment and you use gaze and you treat tender points and the patient closes their eyes sometime during it all. Since I didn't know the exact timing of recruiting the gaze or closing and opening the eyes or even what you should be feeling for, I spent the next year figuring that out in my practice. I then hunted down Dr. Feely at Convo 2019 and spent a good hour with him or so having him show me how he uses neuroocular release. I found that there were similarities, but there were also differences. My understanding of Dr. Feely's method is first you find and monitor a tender point. The patient is instructed and assisted to a position of ease to where the tender point no longer hurts when pressed on. Direct the patient to stare at a specific point in the room that when aligned correctly results in further softening of the tender point. Have the patient hold that treatment gaze for three seconds. Ask the patient to close their eyes, then straighten up to their neutral position, and then open their eyes. The tender point is again palpated with the localized goal of complete resolution of pain. Now I'll share my observations regarding combining neuroc release with strain counterstrain. First, find a counterstrain tender point, making sure the point you've located is actually a counterstrain point and not some other type of point that hurts when pushed on. If you haven't already watched my videos, What's the Point and Strain Counterstrain More Than a Point, I'd like to again say that I highly recommend that you do so. Use two fingertips on your other hand and ask the patient to follow those fingertips with their eyes without moving their head. You will know they are looking at the correct spot when you feel the layer of fascia at the very bottom of the tender point relax. It will spread away from the point in a plane parallel to the skin. A big thank you to Dr. Alex Atkinson for bringing this to my attention when he was a student because while I felt there was relaxation in the point, I couldn't quite seem to figure out where in the point it was relaxing. So thank you, Alex. Usually the direction they need to look is towards the point, but not always. You can direct their gaze to the therapeutic spot before or after they are positioned in the counterstrain position of ease. It's easier if you do it before so that you have a hand free to guide their gaze because once you already have them in the position, sometimes you have one hand holding them in position and the other hand is monitoring the point. They only have to stare at the point one second. Basically, when I feel the taut trampoline at the bottom of the counterstrain point become less taut, I'll wait half a second and then I will ask the patient to close their eyes and keep them closed. Patients will sometimes ask me if they need to keep looking in that direction once their eyes are closed. The answer is no. Once their eyes are closed, they can just relax them. Move the body into the treatment position for the counterstrain point you are treating. The patient can help you with this, but the person doing the treating always should fine tune the position, applying a passive force to ensure they have recreated the strain counterstrain position. When the body has been properly positioned into the strain counterstrain position, in other words, you fold it around the counterstrain tissues and feel that you are straining the reciprocal tissues on the opposite side, there will be a palpable release at the counterstrain point and the line of tension on the strain side also relaxes. 
This usually takes one to three seconds, but it can take a little bit longer if there's other somatic dysfunction conflicting in the area, particularly other counterstrain points. Now, you return the body to neutral. That can be done passively or actively, which means you can even treat your own counterstrain points, and then ask the patient to open their eyes. If they open their eyes before getting them into neutral, you most likely have to start over. So that's why I usually watch their eyes while I'm treating them, because if I see that they open them, I'm like, oh, nope, have to start over. Then you push on the point and make sure it has resolved. Let's see what that might look like for a low ilium, AKA psoas minor strain counterstrain dysfunction. Besides tender points, I have found that Neuroc release can be helpful with treating somatoemotional restrictions. There are a few ways to do this, and I have a couple of videos on this topic already on my channel. But my methods of integrating somatoemotional dysfunction using Neuroc release have evolved to be more efficient, so I will likely post more videos on this topic in the future. To get notifications of when I post new videos, push that subscribe button. I have made this video as a resource for other physicians and body workers. Do not attempt to perform any manual techniques unless you are a physician or body worker or a student under proper supervision.